Okay, in this video, we're going to determine what each of these angles are when they are formed by a transversal cutting through two parallel lines. So, for this problem, this line, line A, and this line, line B, are parallel. So, we will say line A is parallel to line B. This line, which we will call C, line C, is a transversal, which means that it cuts through the two parallel lines, okay? All right. Now, we know from our problem that angle 2 is 130 degrees, so let's apply what we do know. There we go, about lines, angles rather, that are formed by transversals and see if we can come up with all the other angles uh, in this problem. Now we know that line two and line three, or excuse me, angle two and angle three are what they call vertical angles, okay? And vertical angles, as you remember, are congruent, okay? So angle two is a vertical, I should have wrote it there, is a vertical angle, is vertical two, angle three. So they are both 130 degrees. So we will go ahead and put 130 degrees for angle three. So we've got our angle one here angle two, angle three, angle four, five, six, seven, and then angle eight. So this is our given, 130. So we know that angle three is also 130 because they are vertical angles. Now we also know that angle two and angle six are what they call corresponding angles, which means that they are in the same position, right, in the upper right-hand corner of this group of four, and angle six is in the upper right-hand corner of this group of four angles. And remember that transversal creates two groupings of congruent angles. So when an angle is corresponding, that just means that they are also congruent. So angle two and angle six are corresponding. And remember that corresponding angles are also congruent. So we have angle six as 130 degrees as well. We also know that angle six and angle seven are vertical angles. And remember what a vertical angle is. It shares a common vertex, and then it just shares the extension of each of the two sides, right? So here's a ray on angle six, but it continues down here for angle seven. Here's the vertex, common. Here's the ray for angle six, but here's the extension for angle seven. So six and seven are also congruent, which means they are also 130 degrees. So let's keep going. Now, we also know that angle one and angle two are what they call supplementary. Now, what does that mean? Supplementary angles that are adjacent angles that add up to 100 and 80 degrees, okay? So if we already know, which is 180 degrees, right? If we already know that angle th uh, two is 130 degrees, then 130 plus X will equal 180, which means that angle one is 50 degrees. Because when I add 1 and 2, I will get 100 
and 80 degrees or supplementary. We can use the exact same logic to fill in all the rest of these uh, angles now. One and four are vertical, which means congruent. One is corresponding to five, so that is also congruent. And five is vertical to eight, which is also congruent. So just by knowing one of these angles of the five, we are able to fill in every single angle in this particular instance, again, where these are parallel lines cut through by a transversal. Okay, I hope that was helpful.